Are you looking for a brake controller for an RV or trailer that you're towing? Well, I'm going to share with you what we've been using for 14 years now in this episode of Travels with Delaney. Welcome back everyone. So in this episode, I wanted to share with you a brake controller that we've owned for 14 years now and has actually been in four different tow vehicles of ours. And I am so impressed by this, I wanted to share it with all of you. But make sure you stay to the end of this video because I'm gonna share two items that are going to make it easier hitching up and towing and they are very inexpensive and I think you're going to find them very useful. But let's begin with the brake controller. So if you have an RV or a trailer that has electronic brakes on it, you are going to need a brake controller if you don't have one already built into your tow vehicle. Now, what the brake controller actually does is it's basically communicating with your trailer that you are braking in your tow vehicle and that's going to send a signal back to those electronic brakes on your trailer to say hey let's go ahead and kick in the brakes on the trailer now installing it is a one-time deal for the tow vehicle you're using and then you also have to set it up for your particular trailer but once you do that it's pretty much set the rest of the time that you're going to be using it with that trailer and that tow vehicle what's nice is they're fairly easy to install and they're easy to remove if you want to take them to a new tow vehicle like we have done over the years and if you do change trailers, all you really have to do is just do a readjustment based upon the size and the weight of your trailer. So let's go ahead and hop in my Toyota Tacoma and I'm going to show you which brake controller we use. So the brake controller that I use is a Takancha Prodigy P3. Now I bought this 14 years ago to haul a travel trailer that was 28 feet in length. But over the years I've used it for our fifth wheel which was 35 foot in length and weighed over 9,000 pounds unloaded. And today I'm using it for our 18 foot New Camp Tab 400 that weighs in at about 2,800 pounds unloaded. And that's one of the things I love about this Prodigy P3 is it's very versatile for whatever size trailer you're going to be hauling. Now some people have said, boy Patrick that is overkill for that little 18 foot camper and you know what it might be but if you're going to be hauling for your first time with an 18 foot camper it might make sense to go ahead and spend the money on the prodigy p3 because you never know in the future what size trailer you might be hauling and you will have a controller that can handle just about anything now as far as hooking up these controllers they're fairly simple most vehicles that are going to be equipped for towing are already going to come uh, wired with the seven um pin plug and they're going to run the wiring up right here in the console on the driver's side up under. Now most new vehicles will already come with the wiring adapter that you're going to need. It's just going to plug right in up underneath and then it's going to have the wires. Once you have your Takancha P3 you can go ahead then and take the wiring harness from it and wire those together and then just plug it into your controller. Then all you really have to do is find a place to mount your P3. Now, this is kind of a paradox in terms of where you mount it. You want it out of the way, and yet you want it accessible so that you can see what's going on and you can utilize it in an emergency situation. So it's always kind of tricky finding that perfect location to install it. So in most vehicles I've owned, I've mounted it on my right-hand side down on the dashboard on the lower side, and it was out of my way, but yet I could see it and I could utilize it if I needed to an emergency situation. When I purchased my Tacoma though this summer, what I noticed was it was really in the way of my knee and my knee kept hitting it and I just didn't like it there. So I went on YouTube and actually found some people who had installed it on the left hand side. Now in this Tacoma there was a small compartment that quite frankly wasn't deep enough to really do much of anything. And so watching their videos I was able to remove the screws. I've saved that in case I ever trade this truck in. Um, but then I just inserted it where it's at right now and then wired it in and so i really like it there because again it's easy to see it's in my line of sight and i can reach over quickly and make um, an additional braking maneuver if i need to now this truck did not come with the factory wiring harness typically you're going to find those in the glove box on a new vehicle so this was a used vehicle the gentleman had leased it so i don't know if he never received one or if maybe he had thrown it away uh, when he first got the truck because he didn't think he needed it but a real simple solution was I was able to go onto Amazon and find a direct connect between the Tacoma and the 
Takancha Prodigy P3, and really all I had to do was just plug it into the truck, plug it in here. I didn't actually even have to do any wiring, and so that was a very simple solution since I didn't have that wiring harness that I needed. Other than that, though, that's really all you have to do as far as an install. It's just really connecting this to your wiring system that goes back to where you plug in your 7-pin um, cable from your trailer. And once you do that, you should see lights on your Prodigy P3. Um, and then you know you're actually hooked up. Now, let's go take a quick look at where we plug in um, to the truck to make that brake controller actually work. So on this Tacoma, the plug is right here. Now, what I love about this Tacoma is I have both the seven pin and the four pin, and I like the fact that they put it right up here where it's easy to get to. On my Forerunner and my Tundra, they were located up underneath, and number one, they were harder to get to to actually plug in, and number two, um, they were down low, so it was possible that you could actually bend them or break them off, but up here, they're out of the way. Now your trailer is going to have a seven pin connector if you have electric brakes. And all we have to do is go ahead and plug that in, make sure it's in good and tight, and you can see it's held there. But one of the things that I like to do is I like to use one of these little metal rubber coated bands. I picked these up at Eddie Bauer. They're fairly inexpensive and you get a nice package of them. And I just kind of wrap that around. And what that does is prevent any bouncing up and down to allow this to go back and forth and just any chance that this could come loose during towing. So once we're plugged in, now that controller is going to be able to communicate from the truck to our trailer. Let's go back up to the front. All right, now that our brake controller is installed and our trailer is plugged in, we're going to know that it's working if we see numbers actually reading on the screen. If there's no numbers reading on that screen, then that screen is going to basically give you a message that there's no trailer connected. So when I hitch up, the first thing I do after I plug in before I do anything is I'm going to make sure that I am connected to my trailer. Now setup on this is fairly simple. It's a pretty simple um, operation. Here on the bottom right, if we go ahead and press that, it's going to give us a menu with three options, display, brake type, and help. Now if you click on display, it's going to allow you to adjust things like the brightness level, the color, and the amount of contrast, and you just hit that button again, and then use your up and down arrows, arrows to decide um, what you want as far as like display colors or contrast or brightness. Now if I go back into that menu, we can go into brake setup, then this you're going to do one time most likely for your truck and your trailer. And we're going to click that, and we're just going to select are we using electric brakes or hydraulic brakes. So in the case of this RV, it is an electric brake, I'm going to hit OK, and then it's going to ask me to confirm that, and now that is set. Um, if I click this upper right hand button, this particular controller allows me to add boost based upon the size of your trailer. And so this ranges from um, no boost, so the boost is off, and so for a really small trailer that may be where you want to set it. And then boost level 1 is going to be for a little bit larger trailer. Um, boost level 3 um, and boost level 4 are going to be for your largest travel trailers and fifth wheels because they're going to need that extra oomph to stop that large tra large heavy trailer. So I, I'm just going to set mine at boost off because again our trailer only weighs 2,800 pounds and it's only 18 foot. Now if I use my left and right arrows over here, or on the left hand side, I'm sorry, my up and down arrows, then you're going to see a um, power setting. And this is where when you first hook it up and hitch up to your trailer, you're going to need to make adjustments to, to find out where it should be. There's really no right answer from anyone that I've talked to. It's really just going down, let's say, our driveway, hitting the brakes, and if it feels like the trailer and the tow vehicle are braking together, that's what we want. What we don't want to feel is that sudden jolt from your vehicle and the trailer just keeps pushing you. Or we don't want the trailer locking up before the truck can get stopped. So we want that braking to be synchronous together. And a lot of that is just trial and error. Now, if you're worried about setting this up, um, you can always go to an RV dealership or a truck shop that installs things like hitches and brake controllers, and they may be able to help you adjust that. Someone who's been towing for a while just kind of has the feel for where it is right. So in my case, I'm going to go ahead and set mine at three 
0.5 and hit OK. And that would be our starting point. Now, obviously, we've been towing this for a while, so I know that I like running currently at 3.5 with no boost based upon this trailer. Those settings were completely different when we were towing that big fifth wheel. But once I have those set right and it feels right as far as braking, then I'm not going to touch that anymore. And that's really how simple it is to set up. The key is you do want to make sure you get it set up so that they are braking together because if not, your truck's going to do more work, which is going to run down its brake pads a lot quicker. Or if you put a lot more on the trailer, um, you could also ruin your uh, trailer brakes. Um, the other thing is we just don't want to get any kind of sway or anything like that because of a braking situation. So once you get it set up, you're going to know it's right because you're going to feel it when you're slowing down. You'll feel that they're working together. Now one other feature on this that is nice is right below it is you will feel a little lever. And what that lever does is it allows you to apply some additional brakes. So let's say all of a sudden traffic just comes to a sudden stop, you're braking, but you just feel like it's not going to get stopped in time, you can slowly start pulling that over and applying additional trailer brake to help slow the weight of your trailer down, which should take some of the burden off your tow vehicle so you can get your tow vehicle safely stopped. I've only ever used this a couple times, and in those instances I was towing that big heavy fifth wheel. We were going through Atlanta, and it was just we came up on stop traffic over a hill. I didn't know if I was going to get stopped, applied a little pressure, kind of just slowly back and forth trailer slowed down tow vehicle slowed down we were safe everything was good to go so that is really the Takancha Prodigy P3 brake controller and like I said this has been in four different vehicles absolutely love it well worth the money if I had to do it all over again no doubt in my mind I'm buying another Prodigy P3 from Takancha now let's talk about those bonus items I told you about all right, if you've had an issue with having too much slack in your chains after you connect them to your tow vehicle, the easiest way to take care of that is this little device that I purchased on Amazon. You can see it's just made out of plastic. It just sits over your hitch, and it has loops on each side that you can go ahead and put a link into on each side, which is going to take out some of this slack and that way your chains won't be dragging on the ground absolutely love this and i'm going to put the link in our amazon shop for you which you can find down below in the description for this video second bonus item is this it's the cable that goes to the uh, breakaway switch to basically lock up the brakes on your trailer if your trailer were to become detached from your tow vehicle. Now most of them come with just a straight line cable and a lot of times those will drag on the ground or you have to find a way to, to rig them up. What I love about this one is it's coiled and it comes with a clip on it and all you have to do is clip it to your tow vehicle. And then, because it is coiled, it has enough spring in it, but it'll keep it up off the ground when towing. If your trailer was to break away, though, it would go ahead and snap out of your trailer and lock up your brakes to stop your trailer from rolling backwards down the highway. Two bonus items plus an amazing brake controller. If you're looking for those products, you can find the link to our Amazon shop in the description down below for this video. Until next time, everybody. We'll see you on down the road. Good night.